All right, good old Visual Studio Code. Uh, nothing's open, just gonna get started with something. And then we'll go with the default there. Default, a data generator. That's good for the entry point. I'm not gonna have a test command. Don't have a git repo right now, no keywords. I'll put me as the author. We'll go with MIT for the license. And this all sounds groovy. And now we can do npm install. Here, npm install. I think it's just faker. And that will go out, grab our dependency. And we should now have faker as a dependency. Okay, one other thing. I like to write out the data that I generate to a file. So we'll look at that in just a minute too. But right now, we have the key piece that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and just add faker equals require faker like so. And I've been trying to get into the habit of not using uh, semicolons. So since I am going to write this to a file, I'll want to also include fs. So we'll do npm install fs. And I'll include that here fs require fs and we're good to go all right so i've pulled down the dependencies we have those pulled into our node modules directory like node does and we're pretty much ready for the next step let's see here. The, the, the first thing we need to know is what's our table and our data structure and all that what's that going to look like right so the easiest thing to do is as i often do here on the stream. Let's pull up a browser and pull down our famous Hasura Docker Quick Start. And that page, right down here, we just scroll down here in the doc and grab the wget for the Docker Compose YAML file. So I'm going to now pull that in. Boom. Done. There we go. And let's let me check what's running. Oh, there's some stuff running. So let me let me docker stop. I can just start containers. That will be the Postgres database and the Hasura API. So now I have that. Boom. Let's get this started. So there we go. Docker PS. Yep, we're up and up and running. Let's create our Hasura migrations, metadata and seeds in the Hasura directory, okay? So all that does is just like the npm init, except it's Hasura init, it gives us our metadata migrations and seeds directory for doing migrations and changes and stuff like that to our system and our API. You may need to, uh, you know, you, you may need to have a table without a primary key just to get that initial load of data into the database. So the way that we would need to do that is to actually write some SQL to create that table to put things in because we can create a table then without a primary key and get it into the system. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm gonna bounce back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to type Hasura, migrate, create, uh, primary keyless <laughs> um, and then let's see I think I'll need to do database database name default there we go so all right the migration is created so I'm going to go into migrations but this is what I just created and it gives me an up and down SQL file that is empty what I want to do is to create table and then let's go steal some of this syntax. I'll go back to create table. All right, we're gonna go with, yeah, we're gonna go with that key space. I mean, uh, schema. So public, when you're using double quotes like this, it does casing specific things. So I'm just gonna call this second table. So it's easy to remember. And then we're gonna have all of our columns and other declarations in here. So I got that part of the query done. So we'll go with, we'll just call it an identifier. 
And we're going to make it a var char, make it not null, and then go down to the next one. So we'll call this, what's something we'll do? We'll do address. Right, and then oh, I should do this. It needs to be in quotes. And then this one, we're going to do the created at. We'll use time stamps, not null, default. It's going to be the now function. All right, and then let's go back here. And that should be enough, I believe, to get that one built. And then we'll go over to down, and we'll say drop table that. Add a semicolon for the end of that statement. Postgres PSQL does have semicolons, so I always like to add that. Does it need a trailing comma? Nah. Well, there we go. We'll do that. All right. So now I have those in there. And I should be able to do a Hasura migrate apply database name default. Oh, what did I type wrong? Apply failed. Fatal error. Timestamps does not exist. I'm going to take the easiest path here. <laughs> We're just going to go with identifier and address to start with. Okay, so let's try to apply that again. And there we go. A good application of that. And we'll go back to our code. And now we know what our table structures are. So if we go back to here, these are our columns here. And I'll actually need to do this Hasura console to start it back up. So then I can navigate back to public. And if I refresh the page, there we go. We'll see the second table here and we need to add it to the metadata so that the API knows about it. So let's track that table. So now you can actually see there's the identifier and the address and there is no primary key as you can see. So now this table is available for me to insert data to as I need to without having a forced identifier there. So like if there's a table that has redundancies or something like that and something that might be a key or just something that doesn't have particular key data but you need to get it into a table, this is the way to go about doing that. The next thing we want to do here is start getting some initial columns for the data we're going to generate. So I'm going to do var data equals uh, what is it? ID or identifier address. I think that was the, let's look in the metadata. Oh yeah, that's right. We took it out of the metadata, derp. So you can look in here though and you can see what else you got. You got first table. Let's bounce that back. But I can go over here and see, let's see it's public second table. Identifier and address. Those are the two columns. And I want them to be named exactly the same here that they are going to be in here in my first column or my first row i should say so this is my first row of data and then i'm going to add an in string and i'm going to fix that mishap and there we go so ready for the next thing which is going to be let's see here var oh, we'll just step right into actual generation let's do var four var i equals zero i is less than for this first one let's do uh 200 or no let's do something small let's do 10 rows of data It'd be quicker to troubleshoot when we do that so then i plus plus the braces and we now have something to step through to do the data generation in now um hmm what is the next thing we want to do? We want to do, so it's just address and just identifier. So let's go with, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, we'll go with we'll go with country for one. Yeah, we'll just use country for address right now. But identifier, first off, let's do this. Let's do um, data plus equals, and then I'm going to put the the stuff in here. So there's going to be faker dot data type dot UUID. Um, and then I'm going to add a comma because this is going to be a comma separated file like that. And then I'm going to write, let's write a quick cleanup function here because I want, well, not a function, just a do var. Oops, I need to do it in here. So for each round, we'll go var clean country faker.address.country dot replace. And what I want to do is I want to replace a comma with nothing because otherwise that would break things. And also let's replace this and eh, actually I don't, do I need to do that? For this, I don't know, but let's, let's replace this one. Whoops. Single quote, because that'll also break things with this. So this is kind of like cleaning up SQL injection attacks. I just know that some countries have a single quote or a comma. And with those countries, that would break our SQL. And I just want to keep it simple right now. Uh, in, in all seriousness, it should be taken into account for, you know, like a real production database that you're going to have commas and single quotes and stuff in data like this. But for this, I just want to get it inputting us some general data and that's what this will do. So then I can do clean country. And, and in this part, in the data part where I'm putting together this row of generated data, I like to keep it kind of simple from the context of how many, how many levels deep do I want the something dot something dot something dot whatever. Because I could write faker.address.country open close parens dot replace blah 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 dot replace and then have it all on this one line here, right? But then, I mean, imagine how nasty this could look if I did this, right? And then I still got to do this bit, right? And then go to the next one. So if you have a bunch of lines like that, it can get kind of kind of nasty. So I separate it out for better or worse. And I just put the variable in here and I keep the calls here to a minimum, you know, just to like a, a straight up whatever, uh, where it's just a call off of the actual type, faker.datatype.uuid. I could make it even cleaner and say like, we could do that and then var, right? So that would keep it even cleaner because then I just have this stuff to deal with. So at this point, I need to put in the end of line because it's just the, the two values. All right. And then let's do this console.log. We'll just print out the data, see what it looks like, right? So now let's do an npm install. Okay, make sure all the packages are there, even though we did just install them. I just installed them a few minutes ago, but I always, again, out of habit, just do the npm install to make sure there's no issues, make sure the libraries are there. Once that's done, then I can just run the file and we'll see if we get any errors or not. Ah, we got an error. What is the error? So it doesn't like this because the <laughs> equal signs on the wrong side of the variable. That's pretty funny. Oh, and of course, all the squeaky lines go away. That's the ideal in an IDE, right? You get, you get rid of all the squiggly lines. So now we'll go back and let's run it and see what we get. Oh, look at that. Good data. All right. So that, that has created us basically what is a perfect little CSV file to do an import into a Postgres database with.